10 can you believe it i can't believe it 10 episodes later and we've had so much fun welcome to it this is moments with Mansi. my name is Mansi part and on the show today i have a fave um and if you know me you know that this is definitely one of my favorite people but not only is she one of my favorite people she's a good friend of mine hi darling hi boo how are you it's so crazy seeing your action i'm like oh you're really really good at this i'm like <laughs> we were just laughing two minutes ago and then okay and then Mohan is like okay let's go I'm and like, you were okay. like and and there was no mistakes. How are you, gorgeous? I'm easy. How are How you? How was your day? Same you as always. You got your like eventful day. <laughs> I've rehearsal after this. Oh um, wow. uh, And then we have yeah, that's my life at the yeah, moment. Th- but that's what happens when you're a boss queen, and and that's what I really want us to talk about oh. today because I think um, one of the things that I really admire about you is your ownership of your career, not just the music, but. Your Thank career you. and taking ownership of it and really veering it in a direction that you want. Tell Thank me you. more about the decision to really be at the forefront of controlling what happens with brand Shikana. Oh, um, I think it, it's fear based, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, it's fear based. Just like you, you get into the industry, you start out. I didn't really have like a great experience with management or help mm. in the beginning. Um, and then from then on, I was like, oh, I'm never doing that again. Dad, dad, please help me. And then my dad was like, okay. And then my sister-in-law ended up helping me. And then my sister-in-law stopped. And then my sister took over. And I think from there, I just got into a space where I wasn't really, it wasn't really easy for me to take direction or help from anyone externally. And then I just became, I was like, I'll manage myself. <laughs> Brand Chicana has been managed by your family. How has yes. that been like working with fam? Ah, it's been, it's been, it's been beautiful. Um, It's been beautiful. It keeps us close, Mm. one. Um, And two, I just know that the person that I'm working with genuinely like cares. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes as deep in the game as you can be, you work with people and you're like, do they even want to be here? Mm. Um, And I know like if it's my sister or my dad, they do. Mm. So, yeah. Do do you then find that you have to also be a boss at points, like put your foot down and say no? Yes. (laughs) Yes, <laughs> I do. I and do. awkward much? Yeah, it does get awkward. It does get awkward. It does get awkward. It gets very awkward. Ask Liz. <laughs> <laughs> I see, call her yourself. It's also very strange talking to Liz about you as a professional, right? I'm like, uh, Liz, so shake on the podcast. And I'm like, come on, Liz. Yeah, actually, you're like, to email you. Yeah, well, I'm texting. I'm, <laughs> and my sister's WhatsApp status is no business will be conducted yes. on WhatsApp. Because it gets crazy. But um, we do clash. We 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 do clash but it's it's nice i think because with the donals we're very debatey so mm. it's not really a clash it's just like well you could do this or but you could do this mm. better or at the end of the day we do always meet mm. at a point and that's what i love about working with my family mm. the ego never kind of leads the conversation mm. so that's cool let's yeah. talk shake growing up in kaiser chair oh my favorite place oh you love chokeholds a Durban people really love Durban, and I know we all love places that we're from. I'm from Soweto, and I will always go on about okay Soweto. vibes. But Durban people that I know are always just like favorite place ever. Like if I could go back and conduct everything I do in Durban, yeah, today, I would we go would. back to Durban. Yeah, paint a picture of how you were growing up. Durban was really cool. Growing up, um, always had a show. Mm. Uh, same girl. It's crazy. I'm the same girl. We was from grade one, mm. two, three, four. Always doing a show. Um. If it's not dancing, it's singing. If it's not singing, it's musical theater. Mm. Um, Beach. Always Mm. at the beach. Um, Always getting up to nonsense. Always at the skate park. Shout out to to everyone that knows the skate park. Um, But growing up in Durban was beautiful. It's where my Mm. passion started. It was very theater-based. Love the theater. Um, Is it something you do now? No. Why? (laughs) Because you need to be a triple threat. And I'm only like... (laughs) You know I'm like a it? one threat. I'm like half a threat. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I think I can. I mean, if I read my script, <laughs> I can. <laughs> Choreo? You can't. Like, yeah. my friend, my friend always makes a point of it. He's like, at least in the theater world, like, you won't bump into someone that's, there's no nepotism there. Or like, well, I mean, I guess there might be, but I'm just saying everyone there is like, you really have to be at a yeah. standard or you will stand yeah. out. Yeah. For being bad. Also, if you're going to go into it, you have to respect everyone that's doing that and not come in and say, because I'm Chicana now, I'm, I'm doing And I love theater. to say, because I'm Chicana. Yes. <laughs> have you used no. that? Have you said, I'm no, Chicana? No, never. Please be honest. Have you said, I have never. Um, hi, um, this is Chicana. Well, it's my name, so I do say hi, Chicana. <laughs> so, but I've never, like, used it. When the service is bad. Never. 
Never. When you're not getting great service. Never, ever. Never, ever. You just walk away and be like, hundred oh, percent. I walk away, and it hurts me. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't tweet. I don't. I I, I don't. Hello, Peter. I yeah. don't. Yeah. I feel so bad because I hello Peter, AF. I love that for you though. I I I wish I was more outspoken. I'm a hello Peter. I think inside of me, once in my life, I swallowed a um, a Karen. Okay. And she lives inside of me, and I fight it so much now because You're I. Like, Stay in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's always someone that's ready to be like, this can be done better. You yeah. know? So I, I try and, and fight that. Anyway, for you. Shikana at school, musical theater, yes. all these things. Do you have memories of teachers that were like, you're going to be a star? Oh, darling. ew. No. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I don't think anyone was like, you're going to be a star. Um, I think I was like, I'm going to be a star. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone was like, mm, everyone yeah. was like, mm, no. Um, not really hey mm. teachers i love my teachers i love my drama teachers choir teachers mm. um i if if anything i'm just very critical and stuff like i can think back to my maybe my vocal coach pointing out some mm. things that i would struggle with if i didn't correct them then that i'm struggling with mm. now vocally um that's just that's me but other than that teachers were interesting i think college was interesting mm. in terms of teaching i know i'm jumping ahead but mm. Going to college, the dynamic with my teachers were a bit different um, because I was on TV and mm. then I was a student and mm. then they were like, well, guess you guess it didn't work mm. out for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that dynamic was a bit different. But yeah, no, my teachers were beautiful. I was I, I was find me. that a lot of people, particularly a lot of young people that go to art school, college, um, have a very different in, uh, relationship with their lecturers or teachers than than those of us that go to like traditional universities, you, you know, yeah. because I think your teachers understand that this is an artist. You're in yes. a space where everyone from the educator to your peers that understand. My vocal, um, my songwriting lecturer was Barita. For like, what? Yeah, we, we had great people teaching us at different points of times, so all very understanding. What are some of your favorite memories of, of, cause you went to ABDA. Yeah, I did. Oh, what? Damien. <laughs> My little brother's at AFTA. It's a lot. It's AFTA's a lot. Yo, but I love it. I think <sighs> spaces like that are, are very critical. Uh, but what are some of your memories that you hold dear from there? Oh my goodness. After, I don't know if it's going to Kitchener's after school or something Ooh. dumb, but um, no, after really like it was everything I needed. Mm. Sometimes I'm not sure if it's everything other people need, mm. but I think it's really what you make of it. I mean, as is anything in life, but um, mm. My favorite memories in AFTA is just meeting people. I met so many people mm. at AFTA that are in our industry today that, mm. you know, work with on TV or doing mm. great things. Um, so I guess meeting people, seeing their progression mm. um, and just being a college student. I did work in college, but I was definitely like just naughty. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's a fun time. I always tell my nieces they're in varsity. I'm like, this is the best time to have fun. College is everything. Because life gets It's not like your frontal lobe is like not developed yet. So you have like no <laughs> remorse like, for anything. You, you also have an excuse. <laughs> like I'm still a child, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I miss being having I that excuse. Always tell my nieces, I'm like, you should be having the most fun right now because life gets so real so quick. <sighs> so real so quick. Uh but before you went to college and before we got to know you musically. Uh, at least commercially, then we saw you on Idols. Yeah. I remember the, the roar that you caused in South Africa because everyone was like, who is this young girl? Yeah. You were 16? 16, 17. I did it twice. I think I was 16 turning 17, then 17 turning 18. The how, did you, what, how did the idea to go back come about? Because I feel like some of the things are like, I've done it once, it can I'm hurt good. me. Yeah. You know, and going back again, Delulu is the saloon. Delulu is the saloon. Delulu is the saloon. <laughs> I'm like, if the door closes, that's how you get me in. Like, yeah. just close the door in my face yeah. and I'll want, I'll want it more. Well, I'll find a window. Yeah, <laughs> close the door and I'll find a window. That's me. Yeah. You say I can't do something, I'll do anything that I can do to prove to you that I can. So that's why I went back because I was like, oh, wasn't mm, good enough. Because mm, I am. Mm. Um, Delulu. Delusion. I think you were the first contestant that we saw that Randall was openly really in love with. Yeah. I don't remember in maybe there were other contestants, right? But like in the years that I watched Shame. Idols, he was openly Shout just out like, to him. I love this talent. 
do you have a relationship? Do you have a relationship with him post uh, the no, show? No, we don't because he's really that scary in real life. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He's like, that's him in real life. He is. We don't, but um, I just have this appreciation and this mm. love. Yeah. Shout out to Randall. Yeah. And so uh, now it's idols, but you're still in high school. How does Durban take Yeah. <laughs> Cause now you now you're famous. But now that was la- that was actually that was actually nice for me, cause I was, was nice. I was I, I was a bit of an outcast in high school, mm. um and like, uh you know the girls always had something weird to say about mm. me. So when that happened, <laughs> who's cool now? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? Who's cool now? Uh, the the tone changed as soon as I went on idols. I was more accepted for my differences. At first, mm. it was why don't you speak is Zulu? Like, what is wrong with you? Or like, why, why is your wig so bad? Or like, why is your hair so bad? Or like, why is he, why, what, you know, I did things differently. I grew up in a different culture. Mm. So it was, it was shunned upon. But after being on Idols, they kind of like, you know, TV's about the story. So they loved the story. And then everyone else was like, oh, you're so cool. And mm. whereas at first it wasn't really, something that people took a while to you know i i i know what you mean because i remember growing up i had a friend who grew up in the same setup as you Mm -hmm. right and she always felt like it's it's just not enough especially for for black girls for her yeah she just felt like you you set aside it was the hair thing it was the fashions it was you don't understand do you even eat this yeah you don't eat this you don't yeah i don't have a reference that you have because I'm not being brought up in the same environment. Yeah. Do you find that growing up, you've had to kind of like find a balance of saying, let's just look at me as a person and forget all the other things. Oh, it took me a long time to get there. Mm. I think at first it's always like, what can I do to be more accepted mm. by everyone? Mm. How can I be more black? How can mm. I be less this? How can mm. I be more that? And at first it's just this, you know, um, seeking approval. Um, and I would say maybe in the last year or two, I've just been like, here it is. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm exhausted of trying to impress Here it you is, guys. Yeah. This is what it is. It's never going to be anything else. Um, sorry. Mm. My bad. I care. Yeah. Then you go and record my favorite song. Oh, which one? Yo, I will always thank that love for suited. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that no. I, I genuinely will always thank that. Do you ever look back and be like, I'm glad I was at that phase because I really... No, 100%. You know what I mean? Mm. That album, firstly, Rose Gold, dog. I can't stand that project. Please shut up. No, Damn I... It. No, we were, we were listening to the project on Wednesday with my MD, just going through like, what can we do better for the festive? Mm. What can we add? We know we're archiving. I oh, can't listen mm. to Rose Gold. Oh. Really? Don't ever use that word with Rose Gold. But I love, I love I, it so much. No, I know. That's my baby. But uh, like, but it's got sentimental value for what it's done. Yes, for you. Yeah. yeah, totally. But um, yeah. Suited. Suited. Oh, I was so in love. Eh? Yar. <laughs> <laughs> You're rolling in custard. Oh, you were drowning my in love. goodness. I, I was besotted. You were very in love. Yeah, I was. Um, but that song, dude. Yeah. How did it come about? When when did you pour yourself? Because it feels like that. It feels like there's no other peak of this love that passed the day the song was written. I hear you. Like, on this day, or in these couple of days that the song was written, this person was feeling such intense love. Yeah. Um, and then you worked with Luke and worked with my yeah. producer, obviously. And I think what you guys did on that song. But how did it come about? What did it so did the music start and then the song follow? Like the the, the lyrics follow? So actually, um, Loiso, you know Loiso. So I get this message from Loiso. He's like, hey, my friend's a producer. He asked me to send you the song. So I was sitting in bed what? and like, how crazy. And now Loiso's a superstar. Um so I I open it. I was sitting in bed. I switched on and I, I just also I'm like that's college, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and being young. Yeah. Open the song and you're like <laughs> you, yeah, get, you <laughs> get out of your bed immediately. You're going in. You're going in. And I just put it, I plugged it into like the stupid little speakers that I had. And I just wrote the hook immediately. That's how I felt. Could hear it, could feel it. This is how it's supposed to go. As soon as I wrote that, I just recorded it on my phone. Um and that was it. Wait, you were at Abdo when Suited was recorded? Mm. It was in second year. Hectic. Yeah. 
I wrote it in second year. I wrote it in second year. Came out in 20... I don't know when I came out. 2017. Yeah, I just graduated. Yeah. 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 So I wrote it and then I released it. Maybe it came out after grad. But I wrote it in after, yeah. Do you ever look back and feel like, what what a song? I know you're tired of the project. But that song does something, even when you perform it. uh, Everywhere. Everywhere I've seen you. I saw you recently at a festival. And I I had the same reaction when I hear Suited. Every single time. Do you ever really genuinely listen to it and think, W- we did a thing here. No. <laughs> Please, man, I'm trying to get something. I know, something. I know. I'm like, <laughs> no, I know, I know. I feel that way about Tides. I feel that way about, I don't know. I, I think it's because I was so young. I was just going through the, the motion. Even when I look back, there's not yeah. much of a connection to it like that. It's just, it just happened. I and have, then it went to go be diamond. I know. Shout out. Grateful. Blessing. <laughs> Wow. I remember when I was at 947, it still holds the record for the longest number one. That's crazy. It was it was that, I think, and Lady Zama's Collide. Yeah, oh, Collide. Oh, co- you, <laughs> like, like, the truth is I'm high. Like, no. The truth is I'm high. But those two songs were yeah, literally no, the longest two running songs. Song were doing the most. Uh, on the top 40. Those two songs were doing the most. Those two songs were doing the most. Okay, so that phrase, okay. that phrase gave you that music. Mm. Um... What phase are we at now? What what are we are we still love? Always. Yes. Ah, always. Hopeless romantic. Yes. Never in a relationship. Mm. Just lots of That's em- fine. <laughs> always the Just, bride. Yeah, made. always the bride. Never the bride. Lots of imaginationships. Um <laughs> <laughs> I love I, that. No, it's, it's the truth. It's the truth. Yes. Lots of imaginationships. Um but that's maturity, right? Because now you're writing from what you don't even have. Oh, yeah. You wrote from what I had. experience I was actually <laughs> Now I'm like, <laughs> I mean, if I could tell you the lyrics now, they're hilarious because it's like, um, it's, it's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. But now I'm just in a space where I want to write different songs about love. Mm. I mean, it's always going to be about love. Mm. It's my only point of inspiration. Mm. Um, but I think the songs are just different. Mm. You know, they feel different. That they might not necessarily be a happy kind of love or whatever. Mm. I have a mm. song that's like that's that's like it's pretty sad that you're the best that I've had, mm. and like it's just mm. and it's just a lot of those kinds of truths. But at the same time, acknowledging that the relationship may not be perfect, but it it exists. Mm. So I think I'm trying to speak from my for my my girlies. The girlies that are in the end of their twenties mm. and like outside of it, mm. and our experience of love, mm. um, and it's different. We're not all married, so mm. I have to speak for us. We are <laughs> not all. Married. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. not. What? When? Mm. We have careers, mm. so <laughs> like we have to like make a plan to, you know, to speak to those girls mm. and. The other girls are also amazing, but they are the girls, girlies that sing for those girls. Mm. And for me, sing for the girls like me. Shout out. Imagination we ships. We appreciate it so much. There's, there's not enough relationships out there for all of us to jump into. Not that you want to be a part of a relationship yeah. that already exists. No, that's not what I'm saying. But there's just not a lot of us right now. And I like that you touched on that. That are in, if at all, healthy relationships. Um, so you have to, you have to write for those of us that... <laughs> Yeah. I can only imagine it. <laughs> Don't kill At me. least for now. No, there's, there's I, something. I'm, I feel like that just triggered me. No, there's something for everyone. If you're starting a relationship, there's something for you. If you're yeah. heartbroken, there's something for you. If you're taking a risk, there's something for you. If you're confused about mm. where you stand with your love, there's something for you. But um, there are those kinds of loves that exist. And I think we are, we are, we are served with such a picture perfect kind mm. of love every mm. single day if it's not on social media or in movies mm. and certain endings and it's not like it's that. not the only love that it's exists. not the only yeah. love that exists um sometimes the guy you met on friday night and had the best night with him and mm. never saw him again that can mean something to you mm. you know so i want to also sing about that love mm. so the love of friendship the love of family the love oh, of I need to break up with my homegirls. Like, there's a song about yes. that. So there's something for every kind of love. Yeah. Something else that you love is a good festival, and you've performed at a lot of them. Yeah. But then you went and started your own one. Oh, my baby. Oh, Rose Fest. I had the opportunity or the honor of uh, hosting it, MCing oh. it. 
What a night. Yeah, iconic. What, what? Because I don't know if we have a female that started a, like an independently run festival. Yeah, I don't know. In Maybe we do. South Africa. I only know of her in America. Oh, yeah. Lights, you know what I lights mean? on festival. Yes, yeah, but yeah. you're the only two females I know that are artists that started their own festivals. How important was it for you to do that? Because um, you were already built on all the other festivals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could yeah, have really just yeah. been like, well, I'm, you, I'm like a festival girl. Yeah. They book me. And you went and started your own. Why was that important for you? I feel like I just wanted to do something in music. Mm. And I think there's this misconception that when when you love music you only love the thing that you do so producers are only supposed to produce and artists are only supposed to be mm. artists but i love music holistically whether it's from music in a movie or the art of festivals mm. or um uh, djs people that mix mm. music like i am so in love with it i want to be in every space that i can mm. be and i think that was just me inserting myself into the back end of things and realizing hey man why is the lineup 80% male and 20% female mm. all the time? Um, let's do it the other way around. Mm. Um, so it's just me being crazy. I mean, I would never do something like that again now. Obviously, the festival exists, so we'll do the festival again. But it's hard to dream that big. Also, 28, you're like, mm. I'm exhausted. Mm. I'm not going to mm. take that like risk. So I'm proud that I did it then mm. because I wouldn't have done it. And I would have been too discouraged. Um, and now I have it and I'm like, let's build on it. Mm. Let's get people that are invested in it long term. Mm. Um, so it's important for me to answer your question long windedly. Why did you bring me on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Talk forever. Um, but it's important for me to be everywhere. Same with the studio. Mm. We have a studio now and it's like, oh, I also want to know about the recording of mm. it. Um, I actually wanted to ask you about that because yes. you have your own studios now. Yeah, I do. And it's not, what people don't know, that it's it's not a studio that you only use for yourself. Other people book it to yes. use it. Shout out. Shout out. Yeah. It's really dope. Yeah, it's really dope. Yesterday was dope as well. It's so beautiful. It's and you, you get to have other artists come yeah. in and, and just use the space. Be inspired by different people coming in. 100% yesterday it was Chopper and then there's Nasty and then... Oh my gosh, it's you. Oh my gosh, it's you. I, I haven't seen you in a while. Let's touch base. Mm. Let's sit down. Let's talk. How have you been? Um, what are you working on? You know. But also I think things like that are validating. If people also book your studio, right? That means people must take you seriously as an artist or as a business owner. Because you also want to be taken seriously. Not book my studio because you're my maid. Yeah. But because yeah. you think the facilities I have yeah. are, are of a standard that you can use. Look, the reputation was set before me, mm. which is what which is what is beautiful. Mm. It's not something that I instilled, but it's it's something that I want to continue. Mm. So when I bought the studio, I was also a patron. So mm. I also used mm. to book that particular studio mm. for rehearsals. Um, I think now it's just like, I have a beautiful conversation with peers in my industry with mm. them just saying that like, now that you've bought the space, it's up to us to make sure we book and mm. use the space um, just as a community mm. and a culture. Um, and when the space is ready, hopefully we can have the podcast in the loft. Mm. And like, you know what I mean? It's important for us to to work together mm. because we're trying to create an industry. We're trying to build an industry mm. that's fairly new. Um, and that's also very different. It's, yeah. it's so funny. I was speaking to Don, the last podcast, episode nine. I was speaking to Don and he was talking about how, well, I was asking him about how this industry now it's so different and it's evolved and he's been in the industry for many, many, many decades. Yeah. And how uh, seeing the generation now and how they do things and you were saying that they do things differently but I, it, there's a sense of community that I think our industry kind of gets and then forgets. It's like you get it and then it's out of your grasp. Yeah. And I feel like the generation, particularly with musicians, your guys' generation of musicians is kind of getting it. We try. We try to be there for each other, mm. I think. Um, we try to we try to be there for each other, mm. try to make sure show up to your gig, mm. show up to this person's gig, show up to that gig, you know. Um, don't worry, don't worry about paying me out, I'll, I'll mm. be there for you. Or and I appreciate those things. I appreciate the girly saying, When's yours first? You have mm. me. Don't worry about it, you know. Um, but it's hard because it's a doggy dog world. Mm. That's facts. <laughs> so sometimes it's like how do we set a standard? I don't want to take this gig fee for because it's, it's too low. But then 
homegirl's going to take it. You know, how do we mm. come together to make sure no one takes that? Because we know that they can, you know. So it's hard to unionize. I think that's <laughs> unionizing. Is, is the <laughs> that biggest. word is the worst <laughs> word. Sorry. It's hard to unionize as musicians. To say this is the standard, this is how we accept. Yeah. It's hard. But I think it's not even just musicians, right? I think in the industry, especially because it's not... Um, an industry that's that's unionized or that's got people that speak for the basic salary, the basic pay. hundred percent, the, the UIF. People just decide what it is that they want. Yeah. And if you don't take the gig check, trust and believe. Someone else. The is gonna, next person's taking it. Yeah. Don't even for that low don't rate. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't come. And what it means is it kind of changes as we. Do you know what I always say? I feel like our industry now people are getting paid less because people are willing to take less. So there's a there's a bar that gets set. If you don't want to take 70k, someone else is someone willing to take else's, 50. Yeah. I've worked at a place where I was told that blatantly. Like if you want to leave, you can find someone just outside that's willing to take not just that, outside. Just yeah. willing to take 40 percent less. Yeah. So <laughs> do you know what I mean? And you realize, oh my word, we are in an industry where people just want to get in, and it doesn't matter what it is. It means. Very little money. It means no money at all. Yeah. Uh, there's gigs that you get or campaigns that you like no to because you know that it, they want to pay you with brand or yeah, whatever. 100%. And then you see other people do it and you're like, you're doing the wrong thing. We yeah. should be able to yeah. ice these yep. things because it's yep. unfair. Yep. The kind of money that's put forward. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. That's There's a whole conversation that needs to be It's important had. for us to all have our own personal standards, I think. Yeah. And just live by that and not shift it. And you get labeled. Um, for having a standard, mm. I feel. Mm. Um, I don't know how it is for males because we don't really talk, mm. you know. So I don't know what you know. Mm. What I mean, I don't know what they're going through. Um, but I can say that I have a. I get like there's a bit of an eye roll when you bring me up mm. because of how we conduct our business. Or is it? Or, mm. Have you heard people say? Yeah, <laughs> Brent Chikana is a very difficult brand to work with. Oh, and she's just like she's really? not even like. <laughs> yeah you hear crazy things and and i respect that my chat is, is my chat unfortunately is always like but before we get into it I, i'm very clear about what it is that we need mm. to operate mm. and if you don't have what we need to operate it's going to be tricky to operate mm. and i want mm. to make sure that we do it at the best level mm. for you irregardless mm. you know what i mean don't mm. try and minimize me and tell me oh, this is a chilled event man just come with your usb mm, like mm, or that's whatever not how I do it. it's not how it works mm. um but it's a hard conversation because at the same time you still want to support people and you still want to be there at people's events you know mm. can't walk away from shows and stuff because they don't have things it's like you're essentially walking away from the audience but mm. it's hard to explain to the audience that no 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 there was a miscommunication way before me and you mm. could even come together mm. and have a good time you know so we're dealing with it. We work with it. It's a part of every day. Man, I'm just grateful. But I think a lot of a lot of issues like that come up when someone takes their brand seriously, right? When you refuse. Oh, yeah. when you, Whatever oh, seriously oh, is. But when you refuse oh. to to just do things, you are labeled difficult. Yeah. You, you are labeled like, oh, I mean, I don't know. It's a stop and start with her. But it's because... And it is. Yeah. Which is true. Yeah. And it is... that. I, I agree with that. I am difficult. Mm. I am difficult. But but can you well, be... the right thing, though. Can you be willing to work through yeah. that with me um, and not expect me to be easy? Because mm. I'm just not. I'm very complex. Mm. So understand that. And that's how it is work-wise as well. Mm. There's complexities that we have to be okay with. Mm. Um, and not just deny them yeah. like it's hard because when you're a hand you need where's the change room like where, you mm. know where's the, where's the mirror like mm. so it is complex you have a it different is, experience when you walk into a set than any other like a male who's 100%, there or the way you see it mm. yes the mic works yes there's the sound is coming out but at what quality mm. and who's compromising me or you mm. so you have know. you ever been to a gig where you felt like i'm um, I'm sorry, I'm walking away. Have you walked away at a gig? Once. Once. Really? Yeah, only once. And you were like, it's not. Maybe twice. <laughs> <laughs> twice. I think once I was on stage already and the, the mic kept, kept cutting. Mm. And <laughs> That's not even nice for the audience. Bro. We're not having fun when it's cutting. 
So it's like, but what else? What do you want me to do? And I think that organizer just took it personally. And then the second time, um, the second time I felt our team was being undermined. Um, they had gone past our set time. So I was just like, well, contractually, yeah. we done. Yeah. yeah. And that didn't go down well either. Um, I think in my experience, I'd say there's three shows that sometimes it's like, I should have just done the show and got it over with mm. and avoided the stress. But at the same time, why am I making it easier for them? Mm. You know, no one's making it easy for me. Mm. Your situation is, mm. is difficult for me. Why mm. must the difficultness fall on me? Mm. Like, you I know, like that. And it's difficult because also I have a very, like, I'm also very in touch with my masculine. So that makes it difficult mm. as a girl. Um, I also like to have, like, like I'm also like, sometimes I'm like, pull up. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> it's, it's long. I'm joking. I'm, sometimes I'm just also, <laughs> I'm also like, no, you, you yeah. suffer. Yeah. No, you suffer. No, you suffer. Yeah. But um, I'm in the space now where I'm like, what can we do to make it work? Mm. What can we do to make it work? Because trying to mitigate is a mitigate, litigate, whatever the word is, the mm. situation after the fact, stressful. So yeah, shows get interesting. Is there a show that you're still looking forward to doing? That you're just like, oh, I can't wait to blaze that stage. So Anywhere many, in the world. so yeah. many, so many. I think my top number one <laughs> festival dream at the moment is Glastonbury. Yes, yes. You've said this before, I know. <laughs> Glastonbury. Locally, I know it's crazy, but I haven't done bushfire. Oh, it's so much fun. Ah, uh, everyone says that. Oh my that. gosh, Zoe and I went. We were everyone like, says that. I haven't done bushfire. Rage. Mm -hmm. And then... What else? I think those are my top. Because yeah. one, is, one is local, one yeah. is Africa. And then the other one is, is is international, Glastonbury. That is crazy. You're big on working with the girlies. And, and you, you know, you've worked with the Rouges and Mauritian. Mm. And like the local girls, I think you guys have a nice kind of system of yeah. sisterhood that's yeah, going there. Yeah, you can yeah. see it musically. Um, but are there some guys that you're like, I think you and I would be a smash hit. Do you know why? And I want to know one that's maybe not expected. A couple of years ago, I tweeted about how I would love to see, I don't know if you remember a show called Jam Sandwich. I would love to see a Jam Sandwich of you and Ringo Madlingozi, right? Oh, crazy. I think that would be... Well, did you tweet that once? A long time ago. Maybe like 2015 or something. No way, because we did a show. What do you mean? Friends like me. Where were you? No, that's you. I was there. Remember, we were speaking on oh, the phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Friends like me, it was it was me and then it was Ringo. Yes, that was also crazy. That day was also crazy. That was a great. Oh. That was cool. I'm gonna find that. How tweet. do me? How do Ringo and I share the same audience? Mwah. <laughs> but that. imagine doing a song together. But I remember at Friends Like Me when I saw you guys one after the other, I felt like my head was gonna explode. That's crazy. I also forgot you were there. Sorry, my, I'm literally I'm. Um, we spoke because I was like, oh my gosh. What do you mean? Like, how can they have you? Then and that Ringo? happened. But I had tweeted this a couple of years ago. That's crazy. Uh, genuinely, guys, I'm gonna put this tweet nah, up. Nah, that's uh, crazy. Genuinely, I was like, I really would like to see Shikana and and Ringo on a song together. Yeah, we did, and I was just we're like, we were like, to, we were we were doing the show. It was just that's crazy. I would have never comboed us right? in any lifetime. Katlejo, did you guys see my tweet or what? Mm. <laughs> but that was a great double headliner is there an artist that you like i really would like to just get into studio with this person because the black coffee and and you your eyes oh <laughs> vibey <laughs> vibey uh, but that's almost like you were a girl that's really going very high in south africa yeah. and here's this guy it kind of always made sense that it would happen interesting an artist that you still feel like i need to work with this person definitely nasty yeah um Definitely nasty. Durban babies. Durban babies. But also just because like, uh, come on. Who do you like? Pen to paper? None compared. Nah, income. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. Um, nasty, definitely. Elaine. Yes. Um, 
Nasty and Elaine. Um, there's so many. That's the thing. What was that? Sbu hates us. Sbu <laughs> hates us. <laughs> um, Nasty Elaine. I know it sounds crazy, <laughs> but I would actually really like to do something with Young Stana. Just because he's so Ooh, cool. He's so cool. We don't get cooler. He's so cool. And at the moment, like top three, I'd say those are my top three. And he's very good with the pen. Yeah. Yeah. Top three. Uh, I'm glad that you mentioned Elaine. You guys get compared a lot. Do you guys oh. talk about it like, yo. No, we don't talk about it, but really, that's crazy. It's like the other day you guys were trending because people were just like either or. And I was like, why, why does it have to be like that? But we're so different. That's crazy. It's because we both have boobs here. <laughs> Like, which one with the boo? Like, which which girl? Like, which boobs? Which pair which, do you compare? Because we're so different. Mm. I'm extremely pop, mm. and she's extremely R and B. Mm. I can't do what she does. Mm. Like, I physically mm. can't do it. I can't be competitive because I physically can't do what she does. But anyway, I'm obsessed with her. She knows that. Um, so I'd, I'd hope I'd hope we get to do a few things together mm. i actually would like for people to hear you guys together so they can also just let it go and you're right in saying i like that you you highlighted the fact that it's because you're women right because what I else hardly ever what else yeah what else men put it against each other what what else but i'm just like what else like sonically there's no other thing that could sonically i'm extremely pop she's extremely angry mm. she's ex she's she for me is is R and B like international? She mm. competes with those girls. Mm. I don't. I. 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 I want to be in the pop world where mm. I'm like, how do I do a better vocal than, uh, I don't know, a Katy Perry mm. or a Rihanna on a Calvin Harris beat? Like, it's just different. Mm. It's, it's a different way of singing. No. Back to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> back to back to the beach. You guys come in with a smash. Very young. Durban kids, um, but it really goes everywhere. Very, very young. Mm. How was that success uh, of, of that song as an intro into commercial? Look, I can listen to that song and think, oh, what a time. I hate performing it, but when I listen to it, I'm like, this is just epic. Right? Like, this sounds super chill. Like, uh, man, suited, I feel like it's just... Bit cringy I'm for gonna me. need you to stop. <laughs> to stop the suit. But back uh, to the beach like, because it's so vibey. I'm like, ah, oh, vibes. What a time. Mm. Um, yeah, what a time. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Bewildered. <laughs> Bewildered. Also, it was so long ago. Yeah. It feels like forever. Yeah. Do you know what I liked about it though? Is and maybe that's that's what a lot of very emotive music does. It, it kind of even when you watch the video, you feel like I really wish I understood what it was like growing in the coast, growing up in the like. Oh, I want to know what you guys no, are talking about. That's crazy. You know, it, there's a song that you have also, um, and I think your music does that. I want to imagine what it was like growing up in Durban, or I imagine what it was like growing up in Durban. I imagine what it was like drinking your friend's mom's gin. Oh, you know, you know I love I'm, it. Like, yeah. You're just like, uh, I love it here. The, the, the songs that you have that I feel like, I wonder what it was like. Like, I kind of can imagine this childhood or growing up in this space. We're inland. We grew up in... Hectic. <laughs> so I can't imagine being a coastal kid, but your music kind of gave that. Oh, yeah. It kind of gave that. Back to the beach was that. I was like, I just went to the beach with my friends as teens. 100%. The beach to me was always with parents. No. Supervised. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like... <gasps> on holiday. No. The beach was like a thing. It was a big thing. It was a thing with your parents, but it was mostly just a thing. Like, mm. to hang out at the beach was a thing. Yeah. And how are you finding the city now? Because you're a city girl, sweetie. Ah, oh, fully. <laughs> I'm in a lace wig. Like, the city uh, heals you. Yeah, the city... <laughs> I love the city. Joburg yeah. is definitely home. Um, yeah, I just love it. I love it. I'm, I'm a fast-paced person mm. mentally. Mm. Um, so that works for for me, mm. um, but I just do love going home. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you know, I'm home home. I feel physically different as soon as I 
as soon as I walk out of the plane or step mm. out of my car mm. and I'm in KZN, mm. whether I'm in Harry Smith mm. <laughs> at the toll gate or mm. whatever, I physically feel the difference energetically. That is so true. Yeah. I, I was talking to my friend. I'm like, when I go to Soweto, as soon as I get to Soweto Highway, yeah, there's something in me that, that can't just, o- that my grand's house is just too far all of a sudden. Yeah. Because what do you mean I'm not in La Lady already? Yeah. Because there is that energy of being home, and I guess it's familiarity that really is amazing. And you got to have that for a while during COVID. You went home. Yes. Oof. How amazing! So good. you could have been locked. Uh-uh. What was it? What were we doing? Lockdown. I think yeah. it was locked up. I locked down here for a bit, but yeah. then I, I went home. Yeah. How was that? Locked. Oh, I locked had to go home. Fans. We have no work, babes. How are we gonna pay rent? That's true. Like. It got really awkward, but going home was beautiful. Yeah, because lockdown, lockdown ca- kind of brought me back home, mm. and brought me into my culture at mm. home, and brought me into Durban scene, and it got me to hang out in Durban. Mm. Then I was like, oh, but I want to go to the club in Durban. So now I'm like, friend, can we go home on Friday because Saturday yes. <laughs> in the li- or whatever the yes. case is. Um, and I would have never like I just lost it. I got so wrapped up like. Shout out to that moment of stillness. Obviously, it came with a lot of sadness, mm. but you just realize that why was I never going home? Mm. Why was I never touching base? Mm. What was that about? Why was I always on, on go? Mm. So if it wasn't for COVID, I would never have the relationship I have with home now. And that calms me down. Mm. It allows me to come back to Jovok better, mm. always um, in a better space. So lockdown, I really got to hang out in Durban and oh, Durban boys. It are sounds like it did more. Durban boys, are <laughs> <laughs> Durban boys are cute. Oh, and the humidity! It's the humidity. Durban boys are cute. The weather's nice. And my friends are there. And my dad is there. And my mm. sisters there. And my niece and nephew. And I'm in my auntie bag, so it's nice to be home. Y- you, y- you know, you touched on something that I think is very important, and that is you don't realize that you're not touching base with your people or going home often. Because when you're in Joburg, you're chasing the next bag. You're chasing the next game. You're chasing the next whatever. Um, and the stillness of COVID, in as much as it brought a lot of sadness, it also really brought realignment. Yeah. And for you, that's what was important at that time, yeah. to be like, yo, let's remember why we're doing this. Yeah, like, what, what's going on? Mm. Yeah. So the introspection was good. Um, yeah, Durban is not like Joburg. So, mm. oh, well, home mm. is not Homes, like yeah. where your adult mm. life mm. It's not the same. Maybe it's better for some people, mm. but for some people, it's nice to go back. Do you think 10 year old Shikana looks at you and thinks, yes, girl, hi, hi. Oh, hi. yeah. <laughs> of course. She's just like, look at us. Of, we're cool. Of course, of course, of course. If you could speak to her, what would you say to her? Mm. Oh, I would advise her to stay as she is at all times. She's cool. Yeah. She's good. Yeah. The chubbiness is fine. The accent is fine. This is fine. Yeah. You're good. The accept it. The worry. No, you're good. That's what I would say to her. I wouldn't want her to seek people's approval mm. so much. To door kissy for <laughs> baby Sikana. For baby Shek. <laughs> your 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 dad, who's a huge support. Mm. Um, and I think we saw this from when you were on idols and him managing your career and the rest of the family just coming in to help with that. He plays a really important role in your life, just outside of being dad. Yeah. I mean, How has that been to have a relationship that close with with your dad? Oh, such a blessing. Mm. And um, just a blessing. I can't talk about my dad because I love him too much, mm. like too much. Um, but yeah, it's been so nice. Mm. Like I know people are going to get paid on time because my dad's making the payments. Mm. Um, no one can call me out about mm. payments mm. because I know he's on top of it. Mm. Um, he, he, he also is the only one that like just just constantly has dreams bigger for me. Mm-hmm. And, th- and that's nice to have that. Where I'm always like, no, dad, I'm staying local. I just want to... Mm. Su- 
like, oh my God, mm. my dad, but I'm broke. He's like, go be broke there yeah. or go or do this or like, you know, he's always constantly encouraging me in my career, mm. encouraging me in my womanhood, mm. supporting me in that. And I think that is a blessing for my for my sister and I mm. um, as women to mm. have that. Mm. Um, and I think I have friends that have good relationships with their dad. Um, so it's nice to have that narrative because mm. I think men have such a, Mm, a, a, shame a, a flawed for some yeah image. a flawed image for some and even today when i was driving home from the gym or whatever saw a dad and his daughter driving to school and mm. i was like it touches me because mm. if men knew how much their presence means to their daughters mm. maybe they would understand that like yeah damn be there mm. Because it just changes the dynamic. Mm. It changes the dynamic having your father there. Um, so having my dad in my life is top tier, mm. number one blessing for me. Before anything above mm. most is the gift. Liz, who, who really is... My soulmate. Oh, man. Sheik has the best sister ever. I do. But also she really, like, I remember there was one time we were supposed to meet for drinks. And she was like, don't worry, it'll happen because I run this life. Yeah. And she really knows she how to work around your personal relationship as sisters, but also professionally. Yeah. Ha having a sister like that, talk to me about it. Gift, blessing, mm. far from a curse. Mm. I wish more people had sisters like that. Mm. She's just on top of everything. Mm. Um yeah, she's on top of everything. She's an extra pair of eyes for, mm. for weird things. Mm. Um, and she never wants to let me down. And because she's my older sister also, she's also very mothering. Mm. Um, so it's nice to have like, to have that energy mm. um, around you. I don't have my mom locally. So mm. it's like, it's also nice to have that. And I just think from a female perspective, when handling our industry that's what she leads with mm. and i feel like there's nothing wrong with leading with that sense of femme mm. because we're you know we're always told mm. to like leave that behind mm. or whatever but that's how we run our business with a sense of feminine mm. energy and care and christmas gifts and you know mm. and we love you bye <laughs> mm. you know um and care and very stern still, and because still also stern. everyone that's, that knows Liz in the industry knows that you don't play with Chicago. Hundred percent. Yeah. So we have that energy, mm. that mother kind of mothership mm. vibes, um, and I love that because mm. it just it it just trickles down into me, and I learn from her. She reads, I don't read, and just I'm like, so tell me more about that. <laughs> like, so she's studying marketing. I'm like, she studies psychology. I'm yes. there. I'm, you know, the secondhand information is the gift. Mm. Um. Yeah, man, it's a gift. I am blessed, mm. and that makes a big difference. Mm. I think in making things happen. I think even as an artist, yeah. to have a supportive family goes such a long way. Yeah, not even just on a personal front, but even in your business. In in your yeah. business, because there's no weird stealing or whatever, yeah. or there's just transparency, mm. clarity, openness, love. Um. And I don't know what's the worst that it can get. We can have a like, I can we. It's not roses, but mm. like, like every other sibling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's chill. Dynamic, like, yeah. but she's she's a gem, and I think she's my true soulmate. Oh, um, life is interesting. That's so beautiful. Yeah, I think my sister's my soulmate. Yeah, so she's cool, and I'm happy. That I get to work with her, and I'm also happy that I get to see her grow mm. and realize and see how capable she is of everything. And mm. that's woman for you to just jump into a position sure. and she runs a festival. That's woman, and she runs it better than any other festival coordinator that was on that team. And it's no disrespect to them; it's yeah. all love to them. But she met them on par mm. and that was their world mm. she was stepping into it and she met them mm. so i respect that about her i look up to her a lot yeah do you have 
She irritates me. <laughs> You just had to end Sorry, the Sorry, I just After had to After going on about being a soulmate. No, 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 no. And you were no, like, no. I'm going to have to end it with a sucker punch like any sibling would. Yeah. <laughs> like, no. She, she no one. And I, no one irritates her more than me. <laughs> but I can't live without her. Oh. Yeah. So that's Liz. romance. I know. I so know. Romance. Lots of romance. Yeah. Do you, have, do you have things that you look back at that you feel like, even if it's music? Um, I really shouldn't have done that. Oh, or, too many. Or, or I could have done this. <laughs> you know, oh, me. Every night before I sleep, what am I listening to? Top 500 mistakes of the day. <laughs> it's playing. <laughs> always. Really? I always. Do you have a song that you feel like I shouldn't have, that shouldn't have been released? 100%. <laughs> too many. Maybe I have two that I'm like, should have been released. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so... Is it because you're just very self-critical or you feel like, what was that phase? I care too much. I'm self-critical. Yeah. And because you're an artist, you put your, your, your shit out. Yeah. So it's like, it's not like you you did it and it's like, oh, you know, one time yes. I did ABC. No, it's one time I did ABCD and everyone knew and everyone saw and everyone <laughs> listened and everyone, and everyone had something to say. And everyone had something to yeah. say and I don't feel like that anymore. Um, oh. I'm not that girl anymore. I would mm. never say that anymore. Um, but I've said it and it's there on record. Now it makes sense what you said about suited. Yeah. Yeah. No, no one's got the keys to my life besides me. But at the time I was like, hey, you can have them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of growth. Yeah. Growth is wild. I, but I always say artists are so lucky, right? Because you have a reference to see True. how far you've come. True. You, all you have to do. Is listen to even songs we don't know that you recorded uh -huh. before Rose Gold. Oh my <laughs> goodness! I oh, think what? No. And then listen to Rose Gold. Like and just listen to Paradise. Yeah, Travel in Paradise for me shows me growth. Yeah, okay. and that's what I appreciate really? about Travel in Paradise, and what I think about the next one show me more growth. You know, mm. so musically that is. You yeah. have a reference. I think that's yeah. the beauty of Thank artistry. You. But I always say also the beauty of artistry is that it doesn't matter how tired you are of suited and everything else. When you sing it, we we cry, we love marvel, it. we throw love it back it. at you. Love it. How does that feel? Because being an artist means you stand there. This is a song you wrote years ago when Loiso said his friend is a producer, he has a beat. Bro. And when you sing it, there's emotion that people feel. Mm, um, memories. The, but also people sing it back at you. This song was just you in second year, 19, writing it. But people, years later, sing it back at you wild for me i think that's the one thing that makes me want to be an artist like <laughs> beyonce stands there and says alien superstar or whatever and people just sing it back at her that's a gift as an artist how does that feel when you're there and you're like i just released the song and everyone all knows it I, right your um blessing purpose so i feel like art could save the world mm. i love that it could that's such a if we just gave more to title. art, it would give so much to us. Whatever you do, put that as the title. Art could save the world. Art Ooh. could save the world. Oh, write the book. If I see Make anyone <laughs> with that title, Ooh, I'm fetching my coins. Yeah, fetch your coins. You heard it here first. You know, that is a blessing. I think every time I, I have this rule for myself, yeah. every time I sing suited, I have to give acknowledgement to yeah. God. So I say, Sheikh, when you see suited, whatever you do, look up mm. and give acknowledgement. Mm. If I'm looking up and it's, please, mister, I'm being dramatic. That's, mm. a, <laughs> that's a part of like the routine. <laughs> but if I'm looking up and it's suited, I take a moment to give thanks in that moment. Because mm. it's just such a blessing. I can't believe it happened. I can't we believe could it happened. Forever. We could. Thank you for talking about me. I wish I could talk about you and how you are because you're amazing. And oh. one day someone needs to interview you on Moments with Manse. Um, uh, yeah, hopefully that happens. Mm. These guys don't want, <laughs> <laughs> but also, I, I think I want this platform to be for this. That I hear you. even on the comments, people are like, Where does anyone interview you? So, maybe yeah, we'll we want to hear about you. I want to talk to you, yeah. But thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. I love me. you so much. I love you, babe. I hope you get everything and then some. Thank you. I hope everyone that walks into that studio gets residue oh, blessings by amen. being in your space. I receive. And everything just blossoms. Thank you. And there's no trouble in paradise. Ain't no <laughs> trouble in paradise. <laughs> Chicago! <laughs> this was a fun one. Yay! Comment, share.
subscribe, send it to all your friends. Um, I'm still, I'm not very tech savvy, so I'm still trying to figure out how you can download episodes and people are going to kill me. <gasps> what do you um, mean? Do you know how to download episodes on YouTube? Oh, no. Yeah, so you see. <laughs> I'm also not tech savvy. <laughs> like, what do you mean? But every episode, everyone's like, but on the podcast apps, I know how to do it. On the pod, okay, let's make it downloadable. Okay, we're Simple gonna, we're gonna play. try and make it downloadable because I know that a lot of Shikana fans are gonna want to have this on their person. Mm -hmm. uh, but thank you so much for joining me. It's been absolutely amazing. This is Moments with Mansui. Ten episodes in, darling. Mwah, mwah. Love you. <laughs> this is so much fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.